Hello, my name is the Legend Tuba Guy. You're watching Tuba Makes. I print and sell all the Gooner models, the 3D printing subreddits love to hate. Dicks and tits for all. Today, I thought I'd take you through my resin printing process, specifically what I do after the parts are printed. So once they are printed, ready to go on the build plate, I'm gonna take them off the printer, I'm gonna scrape them off the build plate. The reason I'm doing this, just to give you a little bit of context, because you might think, well, what the f is the point of this video? Point of this video is there is not a lot of resin printing content on YouTube. There's a lot of reviews of resin printers on YouTube, but not a lot of resin printing content on YouTube. I wanna see people that are multi machines and printing a bunch of stuff all the time. You can find it for filament, but you can't find it for resin. So I'm posting my process here in what might seem like a dumb, stupid little video, very boring video, but I want to know if you see anything that I could do better, if you have any improvements. Uh, I just started a Discord for the Tuba Makes community, and while there's very few people in there, I've already learned a ton. So if you would like to join us over there, the link will be in the description down below, as well as some other affiliate links. If you wanna help out the channel, I would really appreciate it. So let's get started. Once I've got the build plate into one of my little bus bins, my little wash bins, I'll take the little scraper, I'll try to get underneath a corner and slowly pry it off. I'm using Sunlu ABS-like resin, so I am not delicate at all. Uh, I just rip them off the build plate and they go down into my bus bin. I've got some paper towels down there, hoping to absorb some of the resin that I'm gonna scrape off the build plate to make sure I've got everything off the build plate and there's no little pieces of support or, or little tiny parts that I've missed and that will get caught up in the next print. Once that's done, the build plate goes back on the printer and we get it ready for the next print. Next thing we wanna do, and I know this is gonna be a horrible angle, but the next thing we wanna do is we wanna decant off the used IPA that I've had sitting in a bucket. So I'm going to use my little diaphragm pump that I've got and my filter setup. It's a one micron and a 0.1 or 0.5 micron. I think it's 0.5 micron filters in a row. And I'm gonna decant off the top into an empty container so that I can use that for the wash solution. I'm also going to take the pre-wash bucket that I've been using, and it also has been sitting for a couple days. So I'm gonna go ahead and decant off that too. So I'm gonna suck the, the resin, that, or not the resin, the IPA that's had some of the colorant uh, fall to the bottom of the container. I'm gonna take that, put it into my spare container, and then that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna suck that back out of that container and back into my pre-wash bucket, and that's what we're gonna use to wash parts. For washing parts, if it's a bigger part, I like to remove supports beforehand because oftentimes there's a lot of support material and you're just wasting your IPA's cleanliness, essentially, if you wash all of that. I know that it. some people can say, well, you might splash resin everywhere. Yeah, true. Uh, I don't care. So I'm going to try and take off as many of the supports as I can. If I have smaller items, what you'll see me do is sometimes I'll leave the supports on those to make sure they can't fall out of the holes in the wash basket that has the, the holes in it and the Mercury V3 pluses that I'm using. And if it's too small, if it's really, really small, I will put it in a little reusable tea thing that I got off Amazon for super cheap. Uh, they're like elongated metal stainless steel things that you can run through the IPA. They work great, by the way. I would totally recommend them. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to check them out. So I'm going to remove all the sports. I'm going to get them into my pre-wash. Those are going to wash for anywhere from like six to seven minutes. I try not to go super high, but depending on how many parts I put in there, I do try to cram quite a bit in there. What you'll also see me doing is if I am aware that the part doesn't have adequate drainage or is going to not drain through the part, meaning that there's like a drain hole on one side, drain hole on the other side, and there's only just this one drain hole, I know that the IPA is just gonna get in there but not really flush it out. So what you'll see me do is I'll hold the part underneath the IPA and then drain it and then hold it under the IPA, drain it. Part of me showing you this whole process is to show you what a pain in the butt this is, to be quite honest with you. And this is one of the better artists, by the way. This is a Bulkamancer model that I'm uh, that I'm taking the supports off of and washing here. Bulkamancer is uh, fantastic, very reliable, and you can usually count on the pre-supports, usually count on the hollowing. However, the one thing that I don't like about Bulkamancer is they hollow everything. So any little part that is gonna have more resin in it than like, I don't know, a couple millimeters or something, they're hollowing. 
and they're going to add a drain hole and it might just be the one drain hole and it's up to you to, you know, go F yourself basically. So you've got to do what I'm doing here, which is hold it under the IPA, dunk it, dunk it, dunk it versus many of their other parts. There's drain holes all over them and they drain super well. So it's not really a problem, but Bulkamancer is the best artist that I carry and the other ones are less reliable than that. And often the drainage and the hollowing is not good on some of the other ones. So anyways, that's what we're doing here. Once that's complete, I'm gonna take that over into my final wash. So I'm just moving the basket over into my second Mercury V3 Plus. This is where I've got my clean IPA. I'm not reusing IPA in this final wash at all. Once this gets dirty, it gets moved over to the pre-wash and brand new 99.9% .9 IPA goes into this. I've had some questions before about why do you use IPA? You're in the Midwest. You can go to Menards and get denatured alcohol. I've looked into that actually. And the IPA that I buy off Amazon is the cheapest I can find to buy four gallons of IPA at a time. Refilling one of these Mercury V3 pluses takes like close to two gallons of, of IPA, right? So like it, it's quite a lot of IPA and I can get four gallons of it for like 60 bucks usually on Amazon. So max tight IPA on Amazon. I would look it up, buy four gallons at a time. That's the best price I can find even when compared against denatured alcohol. Next, what you'll see me doing another terrible angle. I'm very sorry for this. I don't have a lot of space out there, but I've got more of these bus bins and I'm just gonna take the basket and dump it out. Again, we're using Sunlu ABS like dark gray for almost everything. It's very durable. And so I can just dump it out and I have not had anything break in me doing this. So it's totally safe, it's totally fine. I've got these little metal racks that are sitting above some paper towel. That is just to elevate the part and tr parts and try and get some airflow around all of the parts. I'm gonna let them sit out here for a little bit and until they get dry, I want them totally dry before I cure them. The next step is that curing process. So what you'll see me do now is any of the smaller parts that still have supports on them, I'm going to use my nitrile gloves and take the supports off. I'm also looking for any misprints, anything where it should be a nice line, like strands of hair or something, but it got you know, jammed up or something like that, or a support didn't work out. Uh, what you'll also see me do is I saw a little shiny section on this part. So I've got a little squirt bottle of IPA. I put on some, some IPA and I just brush it with a toothbrush. That's not really enough to get the all of the resin off so that it, it's a, a totally 100% clean part. That's not what I'm attempting to do. All of these models are going out to people that know that they are kits, they're unpainted, unassembled, and that there will be some finishing involved. So they're going to be painted. It's not a problem to have a little shiny spot of resin that's gonna be painted in my opinion. So, but what I don't want to do is I don't want that to be in any of the keyholes. So when they go to attach an arm to that little torso, I don't want them to be fighting resin that I've left on there uh, because we did a bad job washing essentially, right? So I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting all of the resin out of those holes that I can. I do also, again, going back to like the Bulkamancer being one of the better artists that I carry, some of the other artists, I will actually include a notice in the box saying tight keys, meaning that if you're finishing one of these models, you should expect that you might have to shave down with an X-Acto knife or craft knife uh, some of the keys that go into the keyholes. You might have to sand out the keyholes. It's not a super fun thing to do, to be quite honest with you but the people that are doing this love putting together models. So more power to you. Uh, but I do include that notice in the box if I know that a particular artist hasn't left enough uh, wiggle room in, in the keen and the, in the splitting apart. So I'll include that notice in the box so people know that they're not going crazy, but they do need to continue to file, sand down, whatever they're doing the keys that are going into the keyholes and make sure that the, all the support materials are removed. So I try to do my best to remove all the support material that I can, but sometimes it goes through there. Just know that these are kits. If you're one of our customers watching this, first of all, love you, thank you. And just know that I'm doing my best to remove all the support material from these that I can, but you might find some support material left in, in certain places, especially little delicate places. If I think that it makes more sense to leave support material on in a particular place and let you knife off the support material, like a little support tip or whatever, I will do that occasionally. There's very few parts like that. My job is to get all of these parts to you 
in a safe manner. That means that I don't want you to have to deal with any resin. I don't want you to have to deal with very much support material. And I don't want you to have to deal with broken parts. Once that's done, they're going to be cured on one of the Mercury V3 Pluses. And this will last, I'll, I'll cure things for anywhere from like four to maybe six, maybe eight minutes. It really depends on how big the parts are. If they're really big or really deep, like I'm working with uh, a very big hollow base part and there's holes in it. So like UV light can get in there, but I want to make sure that it has enough time to be able to do that. So I will uh, vary the time according to what kind of parts I'm putting on the plate. I think for, for these parts that you're seeing in this clip, it's like four minutes or something like that. After that's done, I will group the parts by model, especially if I'm working with multiple models at the same time, I'll split it out, make sure that I know which parts go where, and then I'll put them into my little order bins that I have for every order. And that's how I separate them out. And then they go down to shipping. So there you go. There's kind of my whole process post slicing and prior to packing up in a box and actually shipping out. Uh, we took parts off the build plate. We took supports off if they're big parts. And if they're little teeny tiny parts, I put them in one of those little metal cages I talked about. Wash them twice in my pre-wash and then my post my post wash, the super clean IPA, and then let them dry, pull them out, get them cured, make sure that I've removed all the support material, make sure they come out good, make sure there's no misprints, and then send them out to our customers around the globe. If this was helpful, please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you wanna see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. I'd love for you to join our Discord that I just set up. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, to be per perfectly honest with you. I'm just a random dude on the internet, right? So like, I have 11 Saturn IV Ultras. I run this resin print farm. I'm moderately successful on Etsy. But if you have information or something that I should be doing that you're like, hey, why don't you do this? You're doing like way too much work on this or what have you. I would love to hear from you because like I said, there isn't a lot of resin farm content on YouTube and I would love more feedback. So if you see something that I'm doing that you're like, wow, that's incredibly stupid. I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below or over on Discord. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.